assalamu alaikum today we'll be discussing our next topic for the july series 2020 and 21 so last time we discussed mass and intensity today we'll be discussing the turning effect of forces or moments so i'll be sharing with you some concept map so what we uh, what type of questions do we have in this uh, uh, topic that is turning effective force it's uh, basically we discuss it qualitatively and quantitatively but in this uh, paper one preparation we'll be discussing it quantitatively and then when an object is in equilibrium law of moments stability and its factors so we'll be discussing that questions related to that okay so i'll put it in presentation mode okay so <clears throat> if a nut and a bolt are difficult to undo it may be easier to turn the nut by using a long spanner this is because the longer the spanner gives a larger turning moment so what is the formula for turning effective force that is force into perpendicular distance between line of action of force and uh, pivot so if we have for example this is the pivot and uh, we have this is spanner so we are applying a force like that so longer this distance the longer will be because turning effect of force is product of force and perpendicular distance so larger the force or larger the perpendicular distance will end up having larger turning effect of force okay. so one more that's too quick okay a uniform horizontal beam pivoted as uh, at its right hand end is equally bring a force of 60 newton x as i'll remind you about object being in equilibrium so an object is in equilibrium if um, uh sum of forces is zero sum of forces means object is balanced means uh, forces applying on the left hand side are equal to forces applying on the right hand side and same goes for the top and bottom and for the moments also because moment can be two ways it can be clockwise or anti clockwise so uh whatever moments we have acting on the object their sum will be equals to zero for example a clockwise moment of 10 newton meter will be equals to an anti clockwise moment of the same 10 newton meter and both will be balancing out each other and object will be equal okay so a force of 16 newton x vertically upwards on the beam as shown so here we can identify a pivot and we have a force acting upwards and weight of the beam acting downwards so this 16 newton force is applying uh, uh, a, a moment of that will be in uh, clockwise direction and weight will be applying a moment in anti clockwise direction so if our object is in equilibrium both will be equal so 60 into 50 cm and weight into 30 cm so you can equate that uh, okay 16 into 50 is weight into 30 okay so that will be almost 100 okay on okay a driver's foot uh, steady force of 20 newton on a pedal in a car is shown continuous force being applied uh, around the pivot and there is a force on the piston so what is the force of pulling on the piston so we can see here that the force on piston is around the pivot it's anti clockwise and uh, force for the piston is clockwise so distances are identified 40 cm to 5 cm so 20 into 40 will be equals to f into 5 so you will be able to calculate f 
Okay, now we have a wheel barrel shown and uh, 600 Newton force. What is the size of the force? Need just to lift the load, loaded wheel barrel. Okay, weight of the wheel barrel, total weight of the wheel barrel is 600 Newtons. So it is there. Now, sometimes it's a very good idea to draw a simplified uh, diagram. So you can identify the pivot and you can identify two forces and you can identify the particular distances. So here F is applying an um, anti-clockwise moment and weight is applying a clockwise moment. So 600 into 70 will be equals to F into 120. And we'll be able to find out the answer. Asha, we are not uh, converting centimeters uh, distance and centimeters to meters because uh, we have centimeters on both sides of the equation. So even if we convert it, it will not make any difference because it cancels on both the sides. So next question, four table lamps are shown. So here we are being tested for stability. There are two factors of stability. Base should be wide and um, center of gravity should be as low as possible. And after that, now, this is an example in which it's simply asking which lamp is most stable. So you can identify the, that this option A has a lamp which has very low center of gravity and wide base. Uh, you can compare it with B, C, and D. Like in B, base area is lesser. In D, center of gravity is higher. And C is very thin. So option A meeting both the needs. And there can be one more case in which we can be asked about if the object will topple or not. So line of action of base, it should be passing through the line of action of weight, sorry. It should be passing through the base. So if we tilt it, so since this line of action of weight keep passing through the base, it will not topple. But as soon as it happens, it will. A man uses clay to make a pot. He wants the pot to make it as stable as possible. Which two features of the pot must be considered? The area of the base and the height of the center of gravity. Yes, the first option, area of the base and the height of the center of gravity. A piece of uniform card is suspended freely from a horizontal pin. Which point is its center of mass? Now. If this card is hanging freely and it's no more making any moments, not movement, it's not making any moments. So it means center of gravity has come under the pivot and it's not causing any more moment now. So center of gravity can be A, B, C, and D. Now A is point of suspension and it's on a very extreme corner of the object. Same goes for B. So A and D cannot be option, cannot be the option for center of mass. B and C can be. Now you can identify that where most of the mass of the object lies. So that seems to be lower half of the object. So point C can be the center of mass of the object. One. Okay. Do like and uh, subscribe and you can comment also you can ask questions